Good morning, my name is Dr. Slavomir Dobrzanski. I teach piano at Kansas State University in Manhattan, Kansas. Um, we are going to talk about Karoli Akhazy, an important Hungarian composer and pianist, an important student of Franz Liszt. And for that, we're going to share a screen and I'm going to be very concise and uh, rather quick because we only have 20 minutes. Um, here's the first slide. Um, uh, here is Karoli Akhazy, uh, two photos, one younger, one older. Um, the smaller photo comes from the times when he was an active virtuoso in Paris. And uh, the other photo is from the times when he was an established composer. This actually, this photo comes from a publication of his piano music in St. Louis in Missouri from 1911, I believe. Um, well, let's talk about his life. Um, already as a teenager, he studied at, in Vienna at the conservatory there among others with Anton Bruckner. Um, so uh, at that time already, his studies were supported financially by Franz Liszt. Um, later, Akhazy became a piano student of Liszt in Budapest, um, but also studied composition all the time. So Robert Volkmann was his teacher of composition. In 1878, Akhazy uh, moved to Paris, found himself in Paris and met uh, an important virtuoso uh, by the name of Yeno Hubai. Um, who was a student of Joachim and Vietnam. And as a duo, they premiered, sorry about the P is missing, premiered several works by French composers of the time, such as Godard, Saint-Saëns, Lalo, and Frank. Um, at some point uh, in the touring, they found themselves in Algiers, in Algeria. And that was where Henri Vietton retired and, you know, he was aging. And actually, during their visit there, Henri Vietton passed away. Um, and so um, Hubai was given the task of uh, making order in his master's affairs, including um, cataloging his compositions. And while there, um, our hero, Karoli Akazi, was given the task of editing piano parts uh, for um, Vietnam music. Um, in 1883, uh, Akhazy moved to Berlin. There was a big, um, serious, enthusiastic recommendation letter from um, Liszt about him. And so he became a professor at Stern Conservatory and later at the Kulak Institute. And, um, T is missing, sorry, <laughs> again. Um, in 1889, um, he moved permanently back to Budapest and taught at the National Conservatory. Um, we know that in 1891, young Bella Bartok played Karoli Akhazy and you know, Akhazy offered lessons, but nothing came out of lessons because um, Bartok's mother decided that the young boy needed more general education at that time than piano lessons. However, what happened was that in a certain way, the apostolic succession was passed from Akhazy to Bartok. So, you know, we know that as a child, Liszt um, was presented to Beethoven. And so that blessing from Beethoven was given to Liszt and Liszt passed it on to Akhazy and Akhazy passed it on to Bartok. So the continuity, especially in Hungarian music, matters a lot in the history of um, Hungarian music. And now uh, his brother, well, also very interesting, was a painter, actually pretty known, a romantic realist painter. So you might see his paintings when you visit Hungary. Um, or online, there are plenty of them online. I mean, not too many, not plenty, but enough you can see and they are actually very beautiful very talented painter um 
Well, uh, there are operas and chamber music by Akazi, and, and uh, but I'm more interested um, in solo piano music. So the following categories I have sort of established the categories. Um, plenty of character pieces and salon music, um, sometimes longer salon music, not just two pages, but in general, very few two pages. Um, most pieces are at least five pages long. Plenty of nationalistic music, such as rhapsodies, um, Hungarian suarez, and so on, but also mazurkas. Um, they, these mazurkas are interesting and very difficult technically. Lots of double notes. Uh, plenty of uh, programmatic compositions with specific titles. We look at some fugues, preludes, but also virtuoso pieces such as etudes that can go on forever in very thick octaves in the left hand um, and you know when you play Akhazi you will quickly notice that his left hand was must have been extraordinary um, here is a list of titles um, I uh, used them um, bold for Hungarian titles um, uh, but there are also plenty of variations. Okay, so um, it's hard to decide, um, you know, what to play um, when you actually collect select music for a CD, where you want a representation of the style of this composer, rather what you like the most or something. Okay, well, anyway, um, let's proceed to the music a little bit. This is an example of Akhazi's Nocturne. This Nocturne op is Opus 33. This is a second piece of trois pièces, uh, three pieces, Opus 33. Um, it is relatively conventional in terms of following Chopin's uh, form and design, um, but um, you can listen and decide for yourself um, if it appeals to you. Middle section um, is again very conventional in terms of you know following the change of uh, change of mode and changing change of character, um, uh, just like in Chopin um, Opus Nine, uh, for example, Opus Nine number number three has the same switch to very dramatic um, middle section. And suddenly have to play <laughs> Allegro Tempest II also. Um, in terms of you know, Hungarian music, um, this one um, I thought I would um, share with you because um, it shows actually an element, biographical element from Akhaz's life. I, th I thought about this part as this piece as an example of a violin texture. So you have this. Um, uh, very um, violin like a top. <laughs> Uh, 
kind of a caprice style. Um, later he switches to um, leaps and um I feel like this is lots of um, high, uh, high register and reminds me of violin, um, kind of um, caprice. Um, um, Soiree Angroise, uh, number five, it's uh, one of the biggest, largest, longest, most um, demanding technically um, pieces um, of the you know, nationalistic category. Um, it is based on a tune that, you know, I've heard this tune and when I was learning it, I was wondering, you know, why do I know this tune? And this tune is actually a Slovak folk melody, Kopala Studenku, which means she was digging a well. It's a folk melody. And that melody became accidentally extremely important for Slovakia and with different um, text about the Tatra mountains and the lightning over the Tatra mountains, it became the Slovak national anthem. Like has he, you know, uh, he actually passed away before Slovakia be, or became part of Czechoslovakia um, in 1918 or 1920 after the Versailles Treaty. At that time, Slovakia was part of the Kingdom of Hungary. Um, here in the middle of this piece, um, there are some tunes that remind me of um, Brahms and his Hungarian dances. Um... <laughs> and, so... and of course the piece is becoming faster and faster and more demanding technically um, as it goes. This is um, the coda. So on, um, Akazi likes uh, double notes a lot. Uh, so um, it almost feels like this early education in Vienna, lots of um, uh, counterpoint, and it's almost overwritten sometimes, and makes it um, difficult to play, especially in you know when the piece, the idea is that this is you know developing and is becoming more complex. Uh, but at the same time, you are supposed to play faster and faster. And suddenly there's so much complexity in terms of polyphony that it's very hard to play faster, you know, if you want to hear everything. So that's one of the challenges. Um, programmatic music um, by Akhazi. Um, um, the most successful um, pieces that um, uh, actually in terms of you know his entire life I think internationally speaking he um, was um, most successful in his two little pieces for piano they're both programmatic um, uh, one is a um, uh, fairy play and the other one is was by Moonshine and my Moonshine received the third prize in the competition in St. Louis in 1913, sorry, 1913 is the time when the photo was taken that, at the beginning. And um, there's a very specific program attached to the piece and there are several instructions there in that edition how to perform it. So impression of a forest bathed in mystic moonlight and a bird and so on. And then there's a middle section, which is a very much 
kind of a church a song, a Thanksgiving song, um, a very, a very beautiful description. But the piece itself is a uh, very, very beautiful and attractive, and this time not difficult. Also, it's playable by um, a, maybe a teenager, high school student, um, 14 year old. Okay. Um, It's very delicate and you can hear the influence of Liszt in this one. Um, so um, uh, I recommend this piece a lot, you know, to um, for those of us who teach, uh, maybe for a freshman, um, you know, undergraduate. Um, so, you know, to summarize slowly our brief meeting with Karoli Akhazi, um, it's you know it's, it's not he's not a composer he was not a composer who was trying to change music influence he was not a prophet musical prophet like his master was of course he was a traditionalist who was really good at uh, you know maintaining the musical style of the era you know and he is actually the last representative of the 19th century romanticism in Hungary. And he had not much interest um, in experimentation and, you know, modern trends. Um, so it's kind of interesting, you know, this is the time when Debussy uh, was at the height of popularity. And of course, um, Akhaz's connection with France was very deep. And yet, you know, his musical taste, you know, um, stay with Saint-Saëns or Forêt, maybe uh, not much. Um, beyond that. Um, here is a uh, cover from Suarez of Roas. Um, um, uh, the Caroli name is spelled in Latin. Um, this publication is from Breslau, which is now in Poland. Actually, it's my hometown of Wrocław. Um, so plenty of um, pieces by Akazu were published by Heinauer in Breslau. Um, there's a biography of Akazi, unfortunately, in the Hungarian language, but for those who are Hungarian in the audience, um, I recommend um, the author is actually his great grandson, who is a retired professor, I think, of engineering. He's now 80, 83, maybe, but it's a very beautifully decorated book. Um, here is my CD, I uh, was just released um, basically a few weeks ago. It has not yet reached the American shores. I have only one piece, one, one, one CD in my hand that was sent to me just so that I know it's there, but it's somewhere on a ship and it's arriving if you are interested in um, purchasing it or getting it for your library. Um, please contact me. And here um, for the ending, this is an example of Gula's um, painting, a Hungarian landscape. Um, and of course, I have um, I have included a bibliography. Of this you know, I recorded the moonshine because I loved it so much. So it's on YouTube. Um, but also there's a sort of anonymous Japanese pianist Kenji and Kenji plays lots of the music very beautifully. Um, so I recommend listening to Kenji. And um, in terms of research, there was a, you know, uh, an article about Akhazi in 1997 by Ken Holiday, um, but there isn't much anywhere and uh, this is kind of unfortunate. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, um, then 
please contact me um, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. I also can share the music with you. Um, I support performances um, of unknown composers enthusiastically. I have recorded several of them. Um, and so um, uh, are you welcome to contact me and I'll be most happy to share this music with you. Um, well, thanks for your attention and let's keep in touch. Bye bye.